Hello, folks. Welcome to Nate Land. Uh, what do you want to eat tonight? Maybe you want a home cooked favorite, but don't like to go. But don't like don't feel like going to the store, or you want something exciting and new. Maybe a Sonic Blast, like I might get. Uh, DoorDash connects you with everything you want, whenever and however you want it. For a limited time, you can get twenty five percent off and zero delivery fees on your first order of fifteen dollars or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code Nate. Also, thank you to our friends at Viore for sponsoring this episode of Nate Land. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but you will enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75. Finally, fall is here, and it's time to get cozy around the fire with Solo Stove. Shop their fall event now and... Shop their fall event now at solostove.com. Get an extra $10 off when you use promo code Nate at checkout. They even offer a lifetime warranty and a 30-day free return policy. All right, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the show. We got a lot of stuff. I want to thank uh, Chad and Kim. We got a little FBI glasses. They work at the FBI. They came to the show in uh, D.C. That's Gave cool. us some glasses. I had some hats and stuff, too. Uh, pretty neat. He said he was like, you know, he loves... After they wind down from a day, because they have a pretty eventful, yeah, I'd say so. It's just like yeah, just like watching, looking at just chaos all day. Mm-hmm. And so they're fans of this. Also, Megan and Scott, I got they wrote me a nice letter, and thank you guys uh, for that. Uh, and then the Titans, Titans sent me some stuff, and they won. Yeah, Titans are doing pretty good. Yeah, went to the game yesterday. Yeah, how was it? Good, felt great, fun game. Weather was nice. Yeah, it was hotter than one would think. Yeah, it always is hotter in those. Stadium seats then, up there, yeah, yeah, up there, closer to the sun. Yeah, yeah, you're near the sun. <laughs> you're looking. Your head's behind the sun, looking down. <laughs> could you move could over? You, could you? You try to get some of the clouds to come over. Can y'all down over? down in front? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Night night games. You want half moon? Is it full moon or half moon? It's three quarters. Of like, uh, all right. Let's see. Sometimes we get lucky. Uh, yeah, it was fun. I mean, they're you know, this is our big high hopes for the Titans this yep. year. I mean, it's, you know, it's been more exciting than Vanderbilt, but uh, <laughs> you know, I got I got all the messages about Vanderbilt. <laughs> I get everything. He's like, "You watching this?" I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm watching. Vanderbilt has a 32 year old tight end who played 11 years ago at Notre Dame. Really? Uh, walked out of Notre Dame, played 11 years ago, left, went to the Navy. I think served two two tours. Yeah. Now he's back at Vanderbilt, walked on, <laughs> tied in. It's like our Ted Williams. <laughs> yeah. That's what, like all those guys had to go. Yeah. Fighting wars, <laughs> come back. That's crazy. Does he play? Does he play? I'm then? sure he does. I think yeah. they all do. Yeah. I think Everybody they're glad plays. to have him. <laughs> I think I could yeah. play. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. We welcome. <laughs> Open arms. He's out there telling war stories in the huddle. <laughs> We get a delay game penalty. He goes, what happened? He goes, I got carried away. <laughs> yeah. One time we were in Baghdad. And just starts. All right, that's fine. You know, we always give everybody like, all right, we well, thank you for your service. And then we let him back up. And- <laughs> it's a guy older than you playing out there. Yeah, yeah that's wild. He's older than, oh, that is true. Yeah. You could wear his jersey. I could and not feel that weird yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah. Because most of those kids, I was watching Notre Dame this weekend, and I was like, those kids are like 18. Yeah. He was probably I'm- playing in Notre Dame when you were there. I mean, he was probably like older than you, but yeah, I gotta look this guy up. Maybe we we're old friends. Maybe. Yeah, your, your freshman year, he was a senior. I wasn't hanging out with many seniors. Yeah. when I was a freshman. But. He was going to save the country, and you were <laughs> one of the problems. And <laughs> <laughs> you have your camo hat on. He would nod at you and go, "You want to go do this?" And you go, "Yeah." <laughs> yeah. We did used to. We sometimes we'd be walking back to campus at like pretty late, like four or five in the morning, and we'd walk past the ROTC kids running in the morning. And oh man, you just feel like a loser. <laughs> yeah, they're like up, they're chanting, they're running to you know, gonna save the country. Yeah, I'm yeah, just embarrassing myself. Yeah, did you salute them. <laughs> you, you know, we did do stuff like that. Yeah. Looking back, I'm a little ashamed of. Yeah, but yeah, we thought we were being funny back then. Yeah, I mean that's college, you know. You're always being funny. Uh, welcome back, Bates, as well. Yeah, thank you. I, I, uh, I hate to miss last week. My my uh, my mother in law passed away, and uh, sweet lady, um, she lived with us. And I think I told on here a joke one time about we raced each other to the mailbox. Yeah, yeah. And um, 
she passed away kind of, kind of suddenly. So, um, so I was, I had a miss last week, but I'm glad to be back. It was weird not being, watching it as a folk about 30 minutes in. I was like, these guys are idiots. <laughs> this is not good. What are they even talking <laughs> yeah. about? Yeah. I'm yelling at the screen. Yeah. I kept yeah. that seat warm for you, man. Yeah. That's weird. The springs are, <clears throat> they, they don't, it doesn't go up and down anymore. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm joking. Yeah. You look better than any of us now. Hey, I know. <laughs> yeah. You are. You lost a ton. Yeah. Gave mud hens on. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, Coach Doug, Coach Bockler, the Toledo mud hens, big folk, came to the show. Got us a bunch of got us a bunch of merch. Toledo mud hens. Yeah. Toledo mud hens. That's a good name. Yeah, it's. Great. I like it. You know, I was thinking about you mentioned once getting a Toledo. You thought you got a Toledo jersey. Yeah, I was with you on that. I thought about that. That was uh, their hockey team. Yeah. And they met us uh, downstairs before the oh, show yeah. and presented you with a yeah, jersey, yeah. I think with your name on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I do have that. Yeah. I have that. And I bet I have a total, I think I have a Mud Hens, uh, like a, not like that jacket, but a little jersey. I think okay. I have that too. But I went to Toledo, uh, the Funny Bone. Yeah. I think I got one there. Uh, I still haven't, I'm almost positive I looked at it last time. But then I do think I got that jersey. I mm. do remember that. Yeah. Uh, no, that wasn't, that was Scranton. You may have got, I didn't go with you to Scranton, oh. but in Toledo, maybe it was. I'm pretty right. sure you got a jersey presented yeah. to you. Yeah, Ooh, the name on it. Uh, I got to go. Uh, I was doing. Uh, I golfed this week. Got a lot of messages about golf. Appreciate you all reaching <laughs> out for that uh, and stuff to do. We got to figure out the system. It's hard when I have two shows. It's hard to go golfing. So that's a good. When there's two shows, it's tough. And sometimes the night before, and sometimes I got buddies with me, but. I'm going to try to slowly figure this out because I would love to be able to go golf with, you know, just some guys on the road to meet some of you guys, go play. Uh, this one was a kind of special. I got to go golf with Tony Kornheiser. So that was, uh, but I, you know, I play with everybody, <laughs> you know, it was Tony, <laughs> Tony lets on, you know, if anybody's PTI fans, we are obviously big BT, PTI fans. Tony's always the, you know, I'm a big hack and all this stuff. Not, not bad. Yeah. For what he claims to be, He's not, I mean, I'm not, he's not, you know, a scratch golfer by any means, but he's, he's definitely plays it up a little bit more. His son, by the way, he, cause he was telling me we played and then he's like, where did your his son? He's like, where y'all want to, y'all want to play from the back tees or up or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, whatever. He's trying to accommodate me. His son is a unbelievable golfer. Oh, really? Like he, <laughs> I thought like, all right, so I'm about to play with this dude with, with his son and like, I'm going to end up, you know. Like, I'll just, you know, he'll be, like, decent. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, not even, I think he was one over. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think I shot an 85. Like, I mean, it was, I just got beat up by the course. I was playing bad. And then he just was unreal. Great swing. Knows everything. Like, just very, just knows a lot of stuff about golf. A lot of cool, like, just, you know, the way the grass is. I don't know. It's always fun hearing that stuff when someone's, like, really into it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was an awesome experience. And uh, Tony's just the, I mean, he's just a great dude, man. He's just a solid, solid guy. Like truly, he's he's like what you want to be if you're like known and stuff. Mm -hmm. You'd want to be that. Yeah. Like he was talking about meeting Cal Ripken, and he's like, I couldn't believe that Cal Ripken's talking to me. Like yeah. and I was like, how is Cal Ripken talking to me? And he still thinks that. He mm -hmm. still believes that. He's been on PTI. I mean, one of the more that show would be in the Smithsonian, probably. Uh -huh. Like it's I think tonight's their 20 year anniversary show. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's an insane. I say I always watch it every day after school. Yeah, I watch PTI. Yeah, I mean it's a big, big show after school. God. Yeah, I know it's great. Yeah, <laughs> I get home from work. Oh, sorry, yeah. after all my lunch break, yeah. from work. My bad. Yeah, he remembers when they were going to hire Tony. Yeah, they go kind. They go it was goes, between me and him. Yeah, yeah, and they went in the younger version. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, Bates, you're just too old. Yeah, it's uh, he's just like a good like I I love that idea of just when you meet like when you you know he's like i can't believe cal ripken's talking to me like he's like i'm just a dumb journalist like you know mm -hmm. that attitude is just always is always great to hear someone say and you know i think it makes it when you meet them you're like oh this this person's a solid person you know yeah it was cool so we're all you're all over the place this weekend no i don't even know we pulled up in the bus this morning uh Hershey, Pennsylvania, had some great time. Great time in Hershey, met a lot of people. Yeah, I'd be listening to the podcast. Let's go, folks. Get yelled at every show. I love it. Uh, we went to the Hershey. We did go to Hershey World. We went. Nick, uh, Nick went and, and he left us. We go to like so. It's an amusement park. There's a chocolate world. Yeah, <clears throat> and there's a big amusement park. 
we walked around the music park, walked to the zoo. Uh, we didn't ride any rides. It was a kind of crap. Like, the lot of rides were a little long, and then we didn't have a ton of time. And then so we were going to go back. I was going to go back to the hotel, take a nap, and get ready for the show because we were leaving Sunday night. We left right after the show and the bus and drove home. Uh, and then Nick's like, I'm going to you know, I'm gonna stick, stick around for a little bit. So we just watched. I'm just watching Nick just bees everywhere. And then <laughs> he gets on a Nick. I mean, he'll have to tell. We'll have to give him back here, tell the story. Like he somehow got on. He went on some tour on a trolley. He's got a bike, right? Yeah. So he always yeah. brings a bike with him to ride. So you always got to watch Nick because Nick's got to talk them into letting him bring his bike in. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do, Nick's like, I'll get it in. And then you just kind of, we went in, we went in and then uh, Nick just, we wait to see if they're going to let him bring his bike in or not. And he usually gets it in. And so then he rides the trolley, goes through, and then uh, I think I lost at one point. He was on a trolley. He went to some kid's show and he sat in the front <laughs> row with the kids. And it was... Like children, you know, and like the parents were kind of uncomfortable with it, <laughs> rightfully so. Uh, and so, and then he ended up like on the bike. This is like a very uh, brief, this is the stuff that Nick tells stories. He goes, and then I got kind of lost going back. I rode my bike to a golf course, met some really nice people out there. And I'm like, what? And then he doesn't like really get into that. Like, how do you... I understand. All right, you took a wrong turn. You're he's he's somehow driving on a golf course, riding his bike on a golf course. Yeah. Still not great, but I can wrap my head around that. And then just be like, <laughs> I met some really nice people. Up there. Like, how do you meet? So you stop and talk to him. You didn't like. It wasn't like like waving. Uh -huh. Like just like he you rode know, over the green while he people rode were over. Like, how y'all doing? He, I mean, because he went over. I guarantee and asked, "Hey, how do you get?" Yeah. Can you imagine? Go, you're about to putt, <laughs> golf. and then Nick walks over and goes, "Hey." Where's the Batman building? The ride's over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you know where he was asking where the directions, like how to get to how do you get to Hershey Theater? <laughs> He'd ride away and they'd look at each other and go, Did that really did yeah. that just happen? Yeah. How many drinks have I had? Yeah, exactly. They gave us this big chocolate bar. Uh <laughs> weighs five pounds. It's my I was gonna buy a harp or something. Then I was like, you know what? This is pretty good. <laughs> it's a five pound. I actually got a Kit Kat bar that uh, this family gave me. That was a very sweet family. Uh so it was fun. It was a good. Uh, I'll try to think about thinking of anything else. Let's get some of these comments though, uh, for you guys. Uh, Roger Maffey, my favorite episode to date. Loved <laughs> Maffey. No, I'm upset. It's his favorite oh. episode. Oh, my favorite episode to date. I feel like you and him worked together on that. <laughs> my favorite episode to date. Loved hearing about the experience that shaped you guys as comedians. It made me think of how life is about getting out there and doing it. And if you want to learn, you have to gain experience, not just by performing but by learning from other performers. Yeah, that's true. Experience is everything, man. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you could, that'd be just, you got it. People, people don't want to do experience. I mean, a lot of people want to, was going to start comedy actually this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they were like talking about like, God, oh, they're trying to get into it and stuff like that. I was like, you gotta just go do it, man. Like, yeah. you can't think, you know, sometimes people are older and they're like, I'm older when I'm started and all this. You just can't think about that. If You're starting when you're starting. You know, Lewis Black was, in his 40s, you know, Bates, <laughs> early 50s, he's making it now. Uh, you know, uh, Ronnie Dangerfield. He was in his 50s, yeah. I think, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of people do good. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I'm 42. It's not like I'm 21, you know, it may, but it takes a long time. Yeah. But you just can't get into that, man. You can't think about that. You just go try to be the best comic that you can be. And uh, if you have true talent, I truly get, believe you get a shot at it, you know. I was... 35 when I started. 35. And yeah, I do feel like comedy is the fairest of all the entertainments in, in that regard. Because if mm. you are funny and put in the work, I think it'll happen. Yeah. 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 You, I mean, you just get up and go do it. I'm glad, you, you know. Uh, what if when you say that, people now don't do it? They're like, <laughs> so this is the best case scenario? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> no. Um, think about Ronnie Dangerfield and Lewis Black, folks, when you think about it. Ronnie Dangerfield, Lewis Black, Brian Bates. Yeah. <laughs> I think you'd be surprised though if you show up to your local open mic or your local scene. Yeah. The age range is pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm friends with guys in their fifties and sixties and then kids in, you know, that are 18, 19. Yeah. There's yeah. a little bit of everybody. Just say me and Brian. <laughs> I don't know who's sixties. <laughs> there's some guys in their sixties. Uh yeah, you just gotta go. I say I see kids, you know, there's like sixteen year olds that want to start stuff. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, Pete Davidson was sixteen when he started. Uh, but I would, I mean, I, you could argue, make an argument just as much starting too early. You're 16, you're still in high school. I don't think it's bad. Maybe go get some, like, 
you go up, you do some stuff. But you, if you do start very young, I would say you still need to go live a regular. You need to go, you know, if you're going to go to college, go to college. If you weren't and get a regular job, get a regular job. Don't like just think I'm going to pay for it like this. Go do regular stuff because experience is what you talk about. And that's what you make funny. Jordan Lundeen. Hello, folks. Had a funny moment walking into church this past weekend. As I was walking up, the greeter said to me and my wife, Hello, folks. I slowed down and tilted my head with a smile. Not knowing if he was going to think I was crazy, I said, Let's go, folks. And he gave me a fist bump and said, It was good to meet a fellow folk from Nate Land. Uh, All right. That that's, worked out. That's really cool. That would, it may have been really funny. I'll be honest with you, Jordan, would have been funnier <laughs> if it did not work out. No. <laughs> I, it's awesome that I hear that it did work out. Uh, Brian Kennelly. I don't know. Kennelly. Kennelly. I bet that's it. Brian Kennelly. Kennelly? Kennelly. Brian Kennelly. Kennelly? Yeah. Sounds like a... Dustin looks like a police sketch artist trying to draw Nate based on a poor <laughs> eyewitness description. <laughs> that's funny. That's uh, good. Yeah. Robbie Lightfoot. Tell Nick not to feel bad for brushing his teeth with cortisone cream. My dad was a college basketball coach for 30 years. So growing up, my brother and I would attend all of the summer camps. My dad was an early riser, and on the first morning of overnight camp, he realized he had forgotten to pack toothpaste. He decided to quickly sneak into my dorm room to use some of mine. Rather than an alarm clock waking us up for camp that morning, the entire floor was greeted by the sound of my dad screeching throughout the halls. Springing out of bed, I opened my eyes to see my dad violently rinsing his mouth out. It quickly became evident that rather than grabbing my toothpaste, he had mistakenly brushed his teeth with my roommate's jock itch cream. <sighs> We've got a few examples of stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like a lot. Yeah. People yeah. making oh. bad and mistakes. And then to be like, he's at least like, at least it was my son's. That <laughs> <laughs> was his roommate's. <clears throat> yeah, son's roommate. That's a joke. I know. So, oh, and then the, oh. his dad's like, well, at least it was my son's. Oh, and then he finds out yeah. it wasn't. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I do comedy for a living. Uh, <laughs> Sam H., it is very obvious that Aaron is not used to facing that cam facing the camera. Aaron's face during the conversation about Nate came up in comedy is the same face five year old me would make when my mom would run to another adult in a mall and have a full on conversation. <laughs> you didn't like it, did you? No, you know? I apologize that it came across that way. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, it it's literally the stuff I'm most interested in in the world. So I'm sorry that didn't come across. He needs to do better. Maybe you know, don't just lose weight here. Lose it in your frame. <laughs> You look worried. <laughs> yeah, you're the new oh, worried. <laughs> it's the seat. Uh, Andy Barry, if I don't go to Hershey, it's like those guys died for nothing. Is the funniest line in last in in the last year of this nearly perfect podcast. Well done, Aaron Land. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, came well, back. They Brian like, not being here really freed you up. Yeah, cleared things up in yeah. my head. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You're able to just get out there and boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let it rip. Without fear yeah. of somebody just putting yeah. a spoke in my yeah. wheel. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Nathan Burbank. Yes, Aaron's use of oughts is pretentious. Huh. It's still correct. If we limited language to only the words agreed upon by the lowest common denominator in any room, good night. <laughs> we would soon be back to grunts and gestures. Love the podcast and its members. Please never stop. Just admit that you need Aaron to occasionally inject intelligent perspectives hmm. i don't know i'll take any of that nathan uh <laughs> just because we don't use oughts and next thing you know we're grunting <laughs> and just hitting each other in the head <laughs> seeing whose head's harder are you nathan burbank <laughs> no oh he sounds like a cool dude though. yeah <laughs> he gets it yeah. kaylee byram Nate kept trying to talk about the order from Barker and then the next step, but never got to a finish. Inquiring minds want to know. Oh, so talk about the order from Barker and then what goes after that. Mm -hmm. It was like Barker, uh, Barker, you, you would get a then hand out flyers kind of by the door. So, and that would still be barking technically, actually. So you're handing them out. First step was you're not near the club. You're two blocks down or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Then you're in front of the club and you get to kind of hang out there, which is nice. And then you just get to work the door. You don't have to try to get people in. And then you would hope to get to MC and host. And you get to MC and host the show. And then you would get to a point where you then want to just be able to do uh, check spots was a big one. Mm -hmm. So in New York, you want to you get to go up. You don't have to do anything for your stage time, but you go up when they drop checks for everybody which can be 
you know, it really depends. It was some some places it was okay, and some places it was brutal. I mean, I remember doing them one time. They drop checks to everybody, and your your I mean, your job is a check spot. That's your job. Mm-hmm. You're going up there, and they're they the, the waitresses know do not drop checks until Nate is on that stage. And then, Nate, you do not get off stage until everybody's done paying. And when they're done paying, you get off immediately. Wow. So you get no – you just got to hope that maybe this is a nice crowd and they're just not really – they're just handing credit cards to their waiters. Mm-hmm. If there's any problem, it's it's over. And, I, you know, and some comics used to complain about it. They'd be like, oh, I don't want to do this check spots. You're like – but me and Soder, we always talk about it. Like, Soder is – because I was in check spots and Soder got in check spots. And then it was like – that was like – that's what makes you do. Like, mm-hmm. is that's what – being able to go up there and handle that situation – I mean, I remember being up there, no one's looking at you. You're talking in a microphone. It's pretty, like, surreal to be in a room of 100 people, and you're talking on a microphone, and nobody knows. Is it even looking at you? I, I left that show. There's people that were in that show that wouldn't have known that I was ever on the stage. Yeah. I could have talked to them after. Going, no, I was up there talking to y'all for 10 minutes. Can you imagine being someone telling you that? And you'd be like, when was that? Yeah, when were you up there? When were you up there? I don't remember you getting up there at all. And you're like, I was up there. You're yeah. like arguing about their bill yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Well, you got to deal with that as a headliner, right? So oh, it's yeah. kind of a good. I got to do a check spot once in New York. A guy put me on. I didn't know what a check spot was. And I was like, I'll take it, sure. Yeah, yeah I get a check for doing it. Yeah. I'll I got it. there. I think I might have thought that's what it was. And I got up there. And it was the whole time. It was like 10 people in the room. And they're all just looking. Yeah. And I was like, kind of furious because i'm like what are the odds that yeah. as soon as i get up there they drop the checks because i didn't 100%, know what it, yeah. odds are 100 <laughs> yeah. i didn't Pretty even good. know what it meant yeah. i was just glad to do it yeah. i get off furious like are you kidding me mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> that's what may that's what helps you that's what i think helps new york is i mean you and then you want to get out of that like so it's like you just in it and so you need to be put in those positions to then work to get out to be like all right i gotta try to get better to try to you know, and you're kind of hanging out there. And we used to hang out hoping for check spots. Like, you would just go there and be like, man, it'd be amazing. If Can I just come hang out in case, you know, the check spot doesn't show up or something? Mm-hmm. And I'll go up. And that was like a big deal to be able to go up and, you know, but you were at least getting on that stage. And you're watching, you know, Seinfeld was on that show. Yeah. And I got to be on that show, too. You know, all that yeah. stuff. It all matters. So what came after check spots? Uh, waiting tables. Yeah, waiting tables. No. <laughs> Checked after check spots was you would just usually get, I think you would get, maybe you could get guest spots or you would get passed at some clubs. Mm. So you kind of get to a point where you just were, they'd be like, you want to do a check spot? You're like, I don't really do check spots anymore. Like, I'm I'm kind of like, you know, maybe you're not getting paid all the time, but you get to go up and sit and wait. Mm-hmm. Or some clubs are kind of paying you, some are not. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not passed everywhere. It's not like there's a blanket. You're passed at every club at the same time. And then, but you would do some free shows, but you don't, have, but you don't get checks. And you don't get, you know, whatever. Right. There used to be a spot in LA that you'd go up before the MC went up. <laughs> it was like a, a big one. You'd go to an LA show. And these shows, LA used to do, it's like Laugh Factory, I think. And they used to run these shows. You remember the Dane Cook, uh, the HBO thing with Dane Cook? Mm-hmm. And Jay Davis, mm-hmm. Bobby Kelly and Gary Goldman. Uh, and Jay Davis used to run this show. And it was unreal. The show was crazy. And I did it once. And you would go up. Before the MC, before he would go up, he was the MC, and so he would, you would get to go up before him, <laughs> and then so you'd go up and like kind of try to like get the crowd to pay attention, and then Jay Dave's would go up, and then the rest of the show would start, and uh, but yeah, that was a brutal spot too, man. I mean, because they don't even know, yeah, you just go up and they think the show started, and it's not, <laughs> you just do it. <laughs> Easton Bennett, it hurt me to my core hearing Nate call the Broadway straight, or as he referred to it, the Royal Straight, the second best hand in poker. He also followed up with calling the community cards the river. The river is the single card that came that comes last. Last thing to mention, there are five other hands that would top the infamous royal straight, flush, full house, four of a kind, straight flush, and a royal flush. Please bring back Baby Ol to hold this podcast together. <laughs> I didn't know that. And you would think my dad's a whole, I mean, I ate dinner off of cards. <laughs> Someone being really good with cards. Maybe that's why I don't pay attention to them as much. Uh, we played this other game, AC Ducey. It's another on the bus, little fun little card game, and it got wild. I mean, you play like a you dollar hand. No, no, you you lay down two cards, and so it's like a king and a three, mm-hmm. and then you either got to bet the pot or not the pot to be like so. If, so everybody puts in a 
dollar. So mm-hmm. we had a, everybody puts it, there's four of us, four dollars. Yeah. And then so if you king in a three, and then if you're like, all right, I'll bet four dollars that my card will be in between those. Mm. And if it is, you win the money. If it if it's not, you got to put four dollars in. Or if the card's a king or a three, you have to put double the pot in. So you have mm. to put four eight dollars in. Mm. So it's like it can get. And there's one point we're on this bus and we're playing, you know, not everybody's like willing, to, just wants to lose a hundred dollars, but there's one way you're like, it's going to be a hundred dollars. <laughs> like it gets so quick that you're like, if you bet that pot and it, it lands on that one, you then owe a hundred dollars. You know, yeah. we have Chase, our merch, he's 22. Like I'm, I'm like, go in Chase. I'm just trying <laughs> yeah. to talk him into it. He's like, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, and Nick was hilarious. And with, I mean, he got destroyed in uh AC Ducey and then came, then we played poker afterwards and I think one I got it to a hundred dollars. It ended up did. being up a hundred. Yeah. He had a he had quite the swing. Hmm. He would just be, you know, Nick can't see <laughs> the cards. So everybody when he, someone flips the card and then Nick starts getting tired, he starts falling asleep. And so he'll be like this, and you're like, Nick. And you get and he's like, what it and he'll just he just sits there and thinks about it for a long time. I and mean, there was times where we said, Nick, are you in? And he didn't answer. And we would just play the hand, and then we would be like, oh, I'll chase one. And then we'd take the cards away, and Nick goes, he would be like, I'm five in. And we're like, no, the game's over. Dude. Like you, We thought you folded. He goes, I didn't fold. You go, we came to you and said, "Did you? are you out? And you just didn't say anything. <laughs> uh, Corey Alex White, the pitcher from King and his court struck my grandfather out from second base. Wow. We got some I, – I, I, I have one, a couple stories in that. I'll tell this other one. Uh, Thomas Seitz heard a story about King in his court. The catcher called timeout. The King secretly gave the catcher the ball. The catcher returned to the plate with the ball. The King pitched so fast that people couldn't see the ball. So the King wound up, wound up, let nothing fly. The catcher loudly smacked his mitt and the up called strike, assuming he didn't see the pitch. And the pitch was never thrown. <laughs> uh, wow. So f- talking about this too, my uh, King in the court, my dad – played my dad uh took a bat against him really yeah so my dad played uh i mean i don't even know if i was born yet but he was he would play uh fast pitch one year and he said the fast pitch it was all these four fields where the sounds their old sounds field or something Hmm. and they uh and they had four fields and they would cross each other and i think i've played in uh, something like that where you feel where the the right fielder of one game is looking at the left fielder of the other game. Yeah, <laughs> like it's and so you're both just standing opposite of each other and you're playing. And so the king and the court did one of their you know games, and then he was like, "I'll stay around if anybody wants to try to bat." And my dad uh, pit or my dad tried to bat. He's like, "I mean, we never touched it." He's like, "That's why they could do because he's like, no one could touch this guy. Like, yeah. he was so good." My he said, "My dad goes." He said he pitched the ball high, and you think, oh, he made a mistake. Mm. I'm about to just ro- just rope it mm. now. And the ball would just drop to the ground, and you would just swing and miss it completely. And then Ronnie Bargetzi, my cousin, Ronnie, uh, he's my two thumbs. He's the one that told me about the two thumbs Bargetzi. Uh, Ronnie Bargetzi played against him a few times, and he got struck out from second base from him. Wow. Uh, too. Well, he would go out to second base and just pitch. He just he, pitched from second base? Yeah, just he would just go. He, he, he could. I mean, he could do whatever he wanted. I mean, you just couldn't get a hit on him. Like, yeah. he was just so. Here he is pitching blindfolded, right? <laughs> Striking yeah. people out. Yeah. Pretty I mean, crazy. it's it's pretty crazy, dude. I mean, <laughs> he threw behind his back. <laughs> blindfolded. And just striking. Where are they at? Like, where are they at? So there's a guy standing there just so he doesn't, you know, and then the guy's just like, they yeah. get hits. And Jack and home runs. Can you imagine? I mean, <laughs> that guy's, yeah. I could, I mean, this king, you know, they just rope him. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, yeah, it's crazy. It's so <laughs> interesting. All right. Uh, Chris Kelly, hearing Brian's story of calling Al Gore reminded me of the first time I, I ever called into the Jim Rome show. I immediately got through. I was so shocked that I actually made it to the show in one try that when they asked me, what's your question, I got so nervous that I yelled, go Lakers, then immediately hung up. <laughs> that's The sad thing is I'm not even a Lakers fan. <laughs> uh, that's great. I love uh, Jim Rome's Man, we used to listen. It's so funny. He's so funny the way he talks today. Mm-hmm. Like, his scar brother's always feeling for me. I, I, I was always such a big Jim Rome fan. Uh, all right, thank you uh, to our friends at Viore. Viore is a new outlook on performance apparel. Perfect if you are sick and tired of traditional old workout gear. I have the Sunday performance joggers and the core shorts. 
Both are very comfortable. I'm wearing the Sunday performance joggers, uh, actually wearing them on the bus, wear them out of the bus. Like I'm just wearing them all week. It's just easy to wear and you can wear, I work out in the core shorts and, uh, and I'm getting jacked. And so everything is designed to work out in, but it's not, like I said, doesn't look or feel like you just work out in clothes, which is why I like them so much. They make it look so great in everyday life, not only in the gym. So many people are still working from home. So Viore, you can look nice feel great and run errands. You feel like you got dressed up. Ordering online is very easy. The website is not cluttered. Very easy to pick styles and color options and everything has a great fit to it. Do yourself a, fa a favor and get your own at Viore. Viore is an investment in your happiness. Happiness for our listeners, they are offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash Nate. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 in free returns. Go to viore.com slash Nate and discover Viore clothing like we all did. Also, uh, do you ever you get in the driveway after going to the grocery store and realize you forgot the one key ingredient for dinner? Now you have options. Get the groceries you need or a backup meal from your favorite local restaurant delivered with DoorDash. Sometimes uh, we even plan to eat at home, but the day is just so busy we don't have time. You know, we get very tired. You just order some DoorDash. Get what you want to eat right now and right to your door with DoorDash. Craving late night ice cream? Like, I mean, I've ordered. I mean, I've done the Sonic Blast a few times. Maybe you just need to stock up for the week with DoorDash. You get everything uh, in one app along with the restaurants you love. You can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, household items. They have over 300,000 partners. You can support your neighborhood, go to, or choose from your favorite national restaurant like Sonic, Chipotle, Cheesecake Factory. Uh, we get DoorDash for those, I mean, every week. I, I, all of, We do it when we eat lunch here. We get DoorDash. Yeah. Ordering is easy. They even leave your orders outside your door when you choose contact contactless delivery. For a limited, which I've liked. You know, it's kind of nice sometimes they just set it there and you're mm -hmm. like, and then that way you don't got to be paying attention. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code Nate. That's 25% off up to $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the app store and enter code Nate. Don't forget, that's code Nate for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Finally, Solo stove. It's time. It's getting the time out to get it out. It's getting, you know, a little chilly. It's a little chilly mm -hmm. this weekend, especially uh, up north. Hot during the day, cool at night. We're ready to get into fall because we like the cooler nights, enjoying a nice fire with our friends and family, making s'mores over a solo stove and watching football. The solo stove has been so much better than any fire pit I've ever been around. Not smelling like a campfire is just so great. Usually when you get home from enjoying time outside with friends or family, you have to immediately shower off the smell, but not with Solo Stove. There's no setup, just unboxing and enjoy a little fire starter wood, and you can just have a nice fire quickly. We have the bonfire version with the stand. I almost think we could bring this on the bus. Like we could put it on the bus and, you know, and just have a little fire when we sit outside. It's oh. not smelling like smoke is, again, I, I mean, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it's such a big deal. To not, I, I, I'm not a big fan of smelling like smoke. Some people don't care. I, I am not a fan, and uh, I wouldn't make a fire because of that. But now I can with Solo Stove. Uh, it is easy to keep lit and e even easier to clean. Solo Stove fire pits are portable and built to last. It looks great too. They are so confident you will love it. They offer lifetime warranty and a 30 day free return policy. Get the per perfect fire pit for those fall nights and make your backyard a destination with a spectacular fire pit from Solo Stove. Shop the fall event now and get an extra $10, $10 off and use promo code Nate at checkout. They are so confident you will love it. They offer a lifetime warranty and a 30-day free return policy. Just go to solostove.com. And remember, you get $10 off when you use promo code Nate. All right, everybody. This week, uh, we had – what did y'all do? You were – did you go out this weekend? Were you on the road or no? I had to cancel one show, yeah. but uh, last night I did a uh, surprise birthday party for – one of our folks. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Kelly Rose, her husband, Brian Rose, uh, threw her a surprise 50th birthday party. Oh, and nice. he rented out a theater, invited all her friends, and it, it was great. They, yeah. were, they were a lot of fun, big fans of the podcast. And oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. That's were, great. Happy great. birthday. 
Yeah. Kelly. Yeah. Happy Kelly. Birthday, Kelly. Yep. She's 50. I, I couldn't identify. Kept saying it over and over. And she's like, all right. <laughs> Tone down a little bit. Happy 5 0, Kelly. Well, I'm just making the point that. Yeah. I'm Never not gonna, close to her age. Huh? I'm just making the point that I'm so much younger than her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Two different generations. Actually, over the hill. <laughs> Kelly, when you started over the hill stuff, 40? 40? 40's over the hill. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's, well, well, I think, I mean, now, I mean, when I was growing up, over the hill was, yeah, you would say. Now you'll 40. say, what, 43? Now I'll say 50. 50 is the new 40. 50 is the new 40. Uh, I think you're over the hills, whatever it is. I feel like you got a good 40 to 60 is like a, you know, is is prime time now. That's the prime of your life, mm-hmm. 40 to 60? And I bet it gets to 70 by the time I, I get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep shifting. It keeps moving until I'm, until I'm done with it. Then yeah. it goes back to normal. <laughs> so what am I at right now? I'm like, this is. Well, outside inside your body is different ages. <laughs> so inside has been beat up a little true. bit. Outside. You're about to be 30, right? Yeah, I'm going to be 30 next month. 30 is a big one, man. Uh huh. 30 is a, you, you, you know, it's your first, it's, it's like you're like, all right, I'm an adult, you know? Uh huh. And then, yeah. And you, and it seemed crazy. 30 feels old and you're, you never realize how young it actually is until you're past it. Uh huh. And then you're like, God, I'm so young. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think 30 is much different than it was like my, our parents, 30. And 40. I mean, oh, yeah. Our parents' 40 was, it felt like they were about to retire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, not now. Well, when your parents were 40, you were probably at least in high school? Yeah, 79, uh, 20. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I remember I started comedy going to my dad's 50th. And I remember that was crazy. I was like, golly. Yeah. I can't believe I'm at his 50th birthday. Mm-hmm. And I remember that. Yeah. And then, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. I just my big my big adult moment is I, I mowed my own lawn this weekend. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Wow. I had this go. high school kid that would come by and mow it, mm-hmm. and then I would just not even think about it, and he would just show up every week, and then Venmo request me, and it was a great relationship. And then a few weeks go by, my lawn just looks awful, and I'm like, "Where have you been?" And he said, "I retired." <laughs> he said, "Retired." He said, "I retired." Yeah, the kid's like sixteen. <laughs> yeah. So. So I went. I got went to Home Depot, got a lawnmower, and I mowed my lawn, and I weed eat it. It feels really good. Yeah. You know what stinks though is you mow your lawn. It took me like hours. I'm sweating, and then just nobody cares. Yeah. Like I go inside. It's your duty. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, when you're a kid, you at least get like a thank you. Your wife some... posted a photo on Instagram of you holding a rake. Oh, I would have loved a thumbs up in person. <laughs> yeah. Versus an Instagram post. Did so the kid said I retire? Yeah, he said he was done, man. Yeah. Did he really say the words? He said I retired Got from out of the game. Lawns. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't let you know. Yeah. He's too young to. He doesn't know how to retire. <laughs> yeah. I mean, his dad didn't go. You got to let your. You know. <laughs> imagine just going to business like hey, I don't just don't show up to this podcast next week. I'm like, oh. I retired from the podcast. Yeah, I retired a couple weeks you're ago. You're like, oh, well, we just needed to know. You know? You're <laughs> it's like, two oh. week notice. I kept seeing y'all come over here. I was like, why are y'all still over here? <laughs> yeah. I love it. 16 year old retired. Uh huh. They should throw them a retirement party. I would throw We should. Retirement I would party. throw them one. Yeah. yeah. He got out of the game, talk about the good old days. You know? What was it? He goes, remember that time? He goes, <laughs> he's, I just think I just turned 16 then. You know? <laughs> My father in law retired yesterday at 82. Wow. 82. So that's a real retirement. That's He's, a real retirement. Yeah. That's, well, was he, he told everybody. Was yeah. he working as hard as this kid? That's the question. Because this kid was really putting in some work. <laughs> yeah. He had a few different houses on my street. <laughs> well, he was. that was the big thing. You'd go mow grass. Yeah. And, uh, my buddy, we would always mow grass. And they... Uh, and he, he was like, it was like people would always be like, I'm going to start my own mowing yard, lawn. And it was like such a good... I remember my buddy, Nick Newman, his brother, Josh... He started one. I think it's in Mount Juliet. But he was like, a, he was like very, he was younger than us. And I remember he started mowing the grass. He's like, oh, so I can make money doing the mowing the grass. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And then he like, he was just like a dude that like started it. You know, like someone that just gets it. Mm-hmm. Like that's the people when you're young and you're kids. If you get what this is, the hard part is when you don't get it. Mm-hmm. Like you don't get like, you're like, oh, I can do, make this money. I just want this $10 to buy this one thing. I don't really care. I don't need more than what I need right now. And that's all you think about is what you need at that moment. Yeah. And so the kids that think, well, I'll start saving this money. This will add up. They can wrap their head around all of it. Usually pretty successful. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they just get it very early. And so then they start preparing. 
and then they're very prepared by the time they get out. Because they're always thinking ahead to the next thing. The always next thinking thing. ahead to the next thing. I used to mow this guy's lawn. He lives about a mile away from me. I used to roll my our lawnmower a mile to his house, <laughs> and it'd take a few hours and give me 25 bucks. And then I'd roll that lawnmower to Rite Aid, and I got a Diet Coke and a $20 iTunes gift card every time. I blew it all every time. I just never saved that. That's two hilarious things to buy. <laughs> as a, I mean, not not only just the, I don't even, I mean some of the items, just the fact that I'm hearing an old timey story and you bought iTunes card. <laughs> That's how you insane. got music back then. I man. know, but I don't even like. I got paid five dollars to mow my grass in my neighbor's Miss Gibbons yard. Five to she gave me five dollars. Did you get Amazon gift card? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd go buy candy at a candy store like I was born in the 20s. Like, I mean, it just took such a big jump after you know, like I thought that was you not blown away that it was an iTunes card. That seems insane. Yeah, you could buy a couple out, a couple CDs with that with 20 bucks. Yeah, that was big. I almost, I think, I just never heard it. Work. I've never heard it like that. I almost, if you told me you bought CDs, I would be like, okay. Mm -hmm. I think I've just never thought about. I bought baseball cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I bought candy and like five dollars. You go in this candy store and just get a lot of stuff. Yeah, a dollar would get you a lot of stuff. It was on the tail end. That store shut down pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. I have a joke about mowing the yard, and when I say it here in the south, I, that's what I say. But when I do it up north, they're like, they don't quite understand what I'm saying. They say, "Cut the lawn." Cut the yard, cut the grass. Cut, cut the lawn or cut the cut the grass. I think As I say cut to the what? grass. I say mow. I say mow. Yeah, it's the same. Thing. I think I always say cut the grass or mow the. I don't know. I think it is a regional thing though. Yeah. I, I call know. it landscaping. <laughs> yeah. I gotta go landscape. That's what real you did. <laughs> uh, where were we at this weekend? So you just did that. I was in Louisville. Oh, yeah. Played golf. Made my first birdie. Oh wow! Yeah. Congrats. Felt man. good. Oh, real good. What, par four, par five, par three, pitch and wedge. Ooh. Got it foot and a half from the hole. Yeah. Oh wow! And that's the one. real pressure. Yeah. To make that putt because yep. everyone's like, "Oh, this is easy." And then I yeah. I How long it. was it? The hole. 120, 120 yards. Yeah. Nice. Not too bad. No. No. It's a good pitch wedge. And I was playing with Henry Cho, who hit a seventy-one. He was like so good. Yeah, Henry's good. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm playing Henry next week. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see you two play, play with Henry's each other. Henry's good. He's very good. Yeah, but he was super. I mean, we've talked about it. He's super patient. Yeah, with me, and mm -hmm. like, he was very helpful. Me out. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, but, yeah, he's great. We played that golf scramble last mm -hmm. year together. Yeah, yeah. All right. So about animal. I mean, this this guy have to. <laughs> y'all don't feel that when y'all y'all. I mean, that's. A, I feel it for yeah. sure. Yeah. For sure, I feel it. You do. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure. Yeah, but I mean, are you saying it's just us? No, I'm just I mean, you kind of like once he started spiraling down this. Once that Henry Cho started, it's like he, he tells the birdie <laughs> putt story, gets mm -hmm. it going. Henry Henry's a great golfer. I don't think that we you know we, we start feeling like mm -hmm. feel a little sense of urgency. Do you, yeah. you feel mm -hmm. it at all? Uh -huh. Yeah, a little like yeah. You know, people are listening to this and you're going like, and they're like, you know, okay. Yeah, 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 like he just trails off, like you know, like we're just all sitting outside with our hands. Over. Like I mean, the next thing's gonna be like, all right. I'm gonna get out of here, man. Uh, like that's it's the perfect. I'm gonna get out of here. And they yep. go, ah. all right, dude. I'm gonna hit it. Uh, Time to hit the I'll old hit trail. And yeah. you go, yep. Yeah, I'll hit you up later on. It's a little bit like talking to your parents, and you're trying to get out of there, and they just bring up one more topic that yeah, who cares. You can see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you just looking when you're looking for the point to tra to transition and move into something else. Right, yeah. Right, right. I think sense of urgency is all gone, which I think I've talked about on that before. With uh just in general or on yeah, this, I think on this in general. podcast. No, I think in, in all of work working, there's just not much of it anymore. You don't see it. If you have a sense of urgency, I think you can dominate any job you want. Because I mean there's just not much of a hurry for anything. When you go order something, you know. It's like, they're just not there. If I have a waiter, even if they're not great, if they look like they're really, if they have a sense of urgency, mm -hmm. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, it know? doesn't have to be crazy, but it's right. like, I shouldn't feel like I'm bothering you. Mm -hmm. They act like they enjoy their job. I really like Yeah, them. Yeah, and, th and that's a sense of urgency, a little like, mm -hmm. hey, let's make sure you guys are doing good. I want to make sure you have a good experience. So it's not like, it's not just like you're sprinting. It's just a little like, I make, you're, I'm making sure that you have everything you need, mm -hmm. you know? But I don't know. Okay. 
Well, today we're talking about animals. That was a popular topic, a previous episode, the whole penguin yeah. incident. I had two people come with a pink penguin shirt. Oh, yeah. Yep. These two ladies had uh, two penguin shirts. We posted a picture. Very funny. One of the ladies, one's uh, next to me. They're both next to me. <laughs> one's standing there in the camera. The other woman, Travis, uh, tour manager, took five pictures. Not one. She's looking at the camera. <laughs> like, yeah. It just, yeah, it looked like, like a mistake. Yeah, <laughs> she was like, what's that? What's that? Like, everyone just is, you know. Uh, You're kind of separated. I mean, the whole thing looked like a mistake. Well, you know, we do these meet and greets, and... Uh, they're always very nice. And so we take the picture and stuff and, you know, you talk to some people, but I don't know what people want to do. Like people shake hands, they not shake hands. Do they, what, who's comfortable with what, who doesn't want to, you know, whatever. Uh, so I just kind of leave it, you know, I kind of try to fill the vibe out mm -hmm. to be like, whatever they want to go do, I'll do, you know, I don't care. I'll do it. You want to shake hands? I'll shake your hand. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to hug, I'll hug you. Yeah. Uh, if you want to stand 50 feet away from me, that doesn't stay, you know. <laughs> Even better. So on the way here, I saw a sign at a church. I didn't catch the name of the church, but it said, this Sunday, blessing of the animals, 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Do your church do that? I remember my parish used to have a day, yeah, where everybody brings their pet in. And what happens? And they just give a blessing for all the pets. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wait. What did you say? Blessing of the animals. And they and then people know to bring you. I would have went in there and be like, "Wait, we can bring our dog here today." <laughs> yeah. did they, did I was they surprised when you more? you said, "Uh huh," like you knew about this. Did they explain it more? Or is it that's it? I, I'm asking y'all to explain it to me right now. It's just a sign that said, "Blessing of the animals." I'm you, trying to figure out what you so knew that, and you know that means. So bring the your way dog? my church did it, this wasn't like a normal church service yeah. that you can just bring your animals to. Yeah, it was just a separate ceremony outdoors. Everybody bring your pet. Yeah. give a blessing. And you take your dog back home, and hopefully they live a little longer. Yeah, that's what it's for. I don't know. Yeah, just to, yeah. just to bless your pet. Yeah. But it's not yeah. like afterlife. Like they don't baptize them. Right? No, animals yeah. don't have souls. You know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Harper's I down mean, there watching all dogs go to heaven yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, they don't. Right. I don't know. It yeah. doesn't. I, this is this is not the form to. This is not the place to try to figure that out. <laughs> Let's dig into <laughs> yeah. that yeah. a little bit. <laughs> so it's just a good life here on Earth. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just I think it's a fun to... family it's, thing. Yeah, it's it's like a, it's a, it's an afternoon. Like you do it as like, it's like a fun like you know. Mm -hmm. You just learned about this activity. thirty seconds ago. You're you're asking like these hard hitting questions. Like you're working for <laughs> sixty minutes. I'm trying to so figure out what it is. You guys believe that the animals are going to go to heaven? And I, I think it's a nice adventure for the day. It's a nice activity for them to do. I didn't say that. He's the one that's gotten to the soul or not a soul. But you were like, do they baptize them? Do they do this? You kept asking these real questions of going, it was, it's all being taken it a little more seriously than it should be. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, did you feel it that time? <laughs> yeah. I mean. <laughs> all right. So your church did this. Yeah. yeah, yeah we did. Oh, yeah. Keep going with it. Yeah. Did you ever bring your pet? Uh, yeah, we did. We brought our dog in. We had some cats. We your brought, family dog? Yeah. Family dog, cat, snakes. We brought them all in, man. How many different types of pets have you guys had? Uh, they did. Why can't? Why do we? Why did we keep going with the <laughs> church thing? Is there? Is, there, is this going to come back? I, <laughs> is it coming back to something? I was just trying to have a. What is yeah. it? George said a when about the to make the conversation end. Yeah, it ended. <laughs> it never got going you're looking for a button it yeah. never got going yes yeah, it never yeah, got going yeah. and you still go after all of that you then go all right so did y'all so you took your pets to church i think that's fascinating if you if a real life example of taking your pet to church yeah, yeah. yeah. get it I blessed mean, yeah yeah all right <laughs> uh i'm glad to be back yeah, yeah. <laughs> welcome back uh, Brian. <laughs> we uh we had a lot of pets which I talk about some of this in my, like we've had, uh, I've had a snake, okay. spider, uh, fish, all, snake didn't die, but all the other ones died. Like the a spider, I was a kid, our heater broke, froze to death. <laughs> fish jumped out of the back of the tank, committed suicide. We had a bird, uh, flew into a frying pan. <laughs> Parakeet. Maybe you should have went to the blessing of the yeah. animals. Yeah. <laughs> Comes they, full circle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mine needed it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we had to talk with them before all this stuff happened. <laughs> they knew. they had. We gave them the choice. Uh, we had multiple dogs. I don't think we ever had a cat. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Dogs. Yeah. Your parents had a cat. Oh, yeah. My parents had a fat cat. That's right. Cosmo. A lot of this stuff from Abigail because she would get, my sister would get all these, 
animals. Like she went, she worked at a vet thing. She she takes in these dogs and all this stuff. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of stuff, a lot of dogs we got is some of it's like a some of hers that she takes in, and one of us has to take. What is a spider? What is that all about? You get a spider. Having a spider, a like I a think, house, like a tarantula. Or yeah. Like, okay. So you would put it on, you know, I mean, we would fall asleep. My dad would just put it on her chest and we'd be a kid falling asleep and we'd just wake up and there's just a tarantula on your chest he thought that was pretty fun yeah uh, he had a good time doing that <laughs> we didn't love it but uh it was just like having you know just having a cool pet like you know i don't know you just think like i wanted a snake i got a snake one year and uh my dad had to go i remember he had to go buy it i was 12 it was like a big it was it was our it was our first big christmas where my dad had a good like before that, we never really had a lot of stuff. They always gave us stuff. We always had plenty of stuff. But like, it was the first Christmas where it was like, my dad like got a lot of shows that Christmas. Mm -hmm. We were all getting like, you know, getting a it, snake. It was a big one. Yeah. And uh, it snowed that day. It was like this awesome day. And uh, I and we, we had my dad had this aquarium set up in my room, and I was like, I think I'm getting it. I think I'm getting the snake. And then uh, they, they we had a hamster in the middle of the night. They he put a hamster in there. Cause he knows, you know, we weren't kind of not off and on. And Derek, my brother, wanted a hamster, so he's like trying to make me think I got that hamster. And then when I woke up, I got a snake. Yeah, yeah, red tail boa. Dude, where's Holly, awesome. by the way? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen her the whole day. Yeah, I don't know. I just got home this morning. She wasn't here, so I don't know if that's a conversation I gotta have later on or not. <laughs> She's. Uh, we had a we got one year for Easter. Uh, my sister and I each got a chicken. <laughs> it was dyed. They don't do this anymore, I don't think. I think PETA fixed this, but it, like they were dyed pink. <laughs> Why? It was supposed to be like a cute little Easter, like oh, like someone dyed them. Yeah, uh, like a little, like, like a baby, like a, like a yeah. baby chicken. Yeah, yeah, dyed pink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then does it grow up and become like a big one? Well, it got. We didn't think this through. Yeah. Like at first, we just kept it inside, and then in a box, two of them, and then they started flapping more and more. And then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, we had to go to school one day, and we put them outside, and like in a box. And when we got home off the school bus, they were gone. So you never know what happened. Well, we have. I mean, we don't know what got them, but something got something. There's a lot of feathers left. Yeah, a lot of pink feathers oh, really? all over the yard. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought they ran away. <laughs> you had the box top open. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Those are the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff I did. People talk about evolving as humans. Uh-huh. And like some old tweet or something. I'm not that type of person. Yeah. I mean, growing up in the country in the 80s, we just chained our dog to a tree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We did stuff that now people would freak out about. And now as someone who has a dog who's like my child, I would never do that yeah. and, and think it's crazy. But at the time, it's just the way we did it. Oh, yeah. You let them run on the... Like a clothesline hanger, like just let them go back and forth like that. And that was like, if you had money, you did that. Yeah. Like that was, you know, there's like, well, real money, they had a fence. But if you didn't have a fence, which we, I remember when we got a fence, it was like crazy. We were like, I can't believe we have a fence. Yeah. And then, but then, yeah, you'd, you'd walk the, you know, you never walked a dog. You just let it out the backyard. Uh, and you wouldn't even let a dog inside. No, all my, we never had one. All yeah. my dogs and cats were outside. Yeah. Just left them out there. Yeah. If it snowed, we occasionally would let the dog in. Yeah. Just in one hallway. Yeah. <laughs> my dad was furious about it. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. so crazy to think now this dog, dog just lays in, is in our bed. Yeah. 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 Kind of runs the show. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's so, yeah. Yeah. Does your dog sleep in the bed with you? Yeah. Yeah. Or just, do you, you have a cat, right? Yeah, we have a cat. Ooh. You like <laughs> it? You know what? Are you a cat person? I wasn't. I wasn't until, you know, Lucy has a cat. So I was just like, this is just part of the deal. Yeah. And I kind of like it. Yeah. It just hangs out with me. It's just me and him a lot of times. It just hangs out. It's real fat. Yeah. You know, I don't really know what to do about it. About it being fat? Yeah. Get on a diet? Yeah. But I do your feeding window. Hey, you eat during <laughs> your feeding window. Why don't y'all do that together? Big intermittent fasting? You may does a feeding window. Mike Vecchione. <laughs> oh, does he really? Yeah. 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 He does a feeding window. He looks like he's in good shape. He yeah. is. We opened the back bus door and we put a stick of meat. <laughs> we have meat on a on a bowl. And we open the door and he's like, rrr, rrr, here we go. <laughs> get back, get back, get back. And then we jam the meat in there. Rrr, rrr, we hold it and pull it back and usually the spoon part's gone. 
And then he comes out, he's a normal guy, you know? <laughs> Sleeps upside down in the back of the bus, not a big deal. <laughs> do you know how much your cat weighs? Too much. Well, yeah, the I fat, don't answer. fattest cat in the world right now is 40 pounds. No, he's not that big. Uh, fattest cat on a record ever was 47 pounds. Get a spoke world record, stop doing this um, to discourage people from overfeeding their cats. Oh, people were trying to break the records? Yeah, so they stopped. Well, the record's still already there, though. God, that's a big cat. I would think that weighed more than 40 pounds. That's four, That's a 41-pound cat right yeah. there, just for some frame of reference. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty large. It's it's almost like uh, his stomach's so big it's all he stomach. probably can't move. Yeah. Like it touches the ground. His legs oh, don't yeah. touch the ground. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's just... You got to imagine who owned that. They ain't in the tip-top shape either. No. You rarely see that, and then you're like, okay, the owner of them, super healthy. <laughs> they run marathons. Yeah. They just, yeah. Uh. yeah. Two-thirds of Americans' families own a pet. Uh, the most popular dog for 30 years in a row, most Come popular on. breed, huh? Golden. is a yeah, golden retriever. Golden retriever. Labrador retriever. Labrador retriever. Yeah. I don't even know the difference. Uh, it doesn't matter. Labradoodles are the new... The okay. new way. What's Holly? Labradoodle. Oh. It's like the fancy dog that's genetically built to be perfect. Doesn't shed. People don't want you buying them. But I uh, I guess I already talked about it. So. <laughs> it's uh, too late now. It's too late now. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they, I mean, I don't, a lot of people have them, you know, because they, they don't shed. They don't, I mean, Lars is allergic to cats. And uh, they're like non, non, whatever that Hypo word. Hypoallergenic? Yeah. Yeah, so people those so we have we know we have people that are allergic to dogs, but like so then they they can have them too, and so they just you know, yeah. And so you got last one. Annie was not. Yeah. Uh, most popular dog name for male dogs Bailey, female dog Bella. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where you take this poll at, but it's I was just like say how to how to. There's it, no way. Why? First of all, Bailey. I don't yeah. know. It's from the American <clears throat> Pet. Association or something. They listen. Com. But what is that name? If there is there a popular Bailey in the world? I don't know. I don't think it matters. I think it's just a name for a dog. I know, you know, just a name, man. Cat Luna. He looked like he struck a chord with you on this one for some reason. <laughs> but why would so many people make that the name? Because this is a made up pull. Like, I don't, I mean, you know, because it used to be. They just like it. Yeah, yeah. You still- they probably their friends got a dog, and they're like, "Oh, that's a cute name." Yeah. Or they probably go to a book like a baby book, and like, "Oh, I like that name." And yeah. It just sticks. So when you when you name your dog after the person, and you meet that person, you know, ours is Holly. If you meet someone, she's like, oh, "My name's Holly." You're like, "That's my dog's name." <laughs> yeah. And yeah. You tell them to their face. And there's a, there's a lot of Baileys. I don't know any Baileys. I know a Bailey. In real life, and it's a drink. Person or dog? I don't person or dog. Yeah. Man. I, don't I don't know, know any Baileys. Know Bailey. Uh, my buddy's kid named Bailey. Okay. Uh, but then um, I think I knew a few Baileys, actually. All right. No animal Baileys. All right, I, retru- I actually don't know any animal Baileys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's the most popular one, apparently. I know you a bear think named, I would know one. I met a bear named John once, <laughs> but never Bailey. <laughs> Sorry, should I put some comedy in this? <laughs> no, oh, no. Lee. <laughs> Horses and cows. Uh, do sleep some standing up. They can lightly sleep standing up because their legs have a ligament that's called a stay apparatus that allows them to lock it in. But once you get in deep sleep, they have to lay down. So it's just for light dozing. Just share that for your yeah. your horse joke. Yeah, you read that like that was the question they just got asked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was knowing that out of nowhere. It was like you just saw someone in the Like back I was go, answering it? Yeah, like, yeah. can horses sleep? Oh, perfect question. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then just... Yeah. Actually... Yeah, I know it did. Mm. Um, Coco the gorilla. You remember Coco? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She had IQ between Seinfeld. seventy-five and ninety-five, and could understand two thousand words. And what did we say Nate's IQ was? <laughs> Seventy, <laughs> seventy-five. Uh, Below seventy-five, we think. Yeah, oh, I don't think. How is it? The hers in between seventy-five and ninety-five. They're just guessing. I mean, I guess I don't know. I guess it's like we do with any of us. Yeah, she, she took some tests. But I don't think it can hold a pencil to take a test. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like that's got to count against you a little bit. Yeah. You probably lose some points when you can't hold a pencil. Well, when, it, when yeah, when Coco, if you're up against it, Coco, and it, the test, you know, 
Imagine they make y'all do it as a competition. Against Coco? And you go, how many points did you get for not peeing and pooping all over the room? I guess we're not counting that today, are we? That's what you say when he beats you. <laughs> yeah. I guess that doesn't matter. I guess that's what you're saying. Okay, all right. Because it's not written on the paper, I guess. Uh, humans and great apes are the only animals who suffer from gout. Oh, wow. So, Is that true? Yeah. Like really true? That's really true. Wow. So Coco could have had gout, huh? Coco did. Could you have. And you could have talked to Coco about it. We would have had something to talk about. You had something to talk about. I'd do the sign language for it. Yep. You know, point at your foot and go, <laughs> balloons out. <laughs> balloons out. Yeah, go. He goes, mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Y'all fist bump? Yeah, fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, the Earth has an estimated one quadrillion ants. There's one million okay. ants for every human. I just always think if you could, if, if someone could be like, you could have a dollar, which a dollar is kind of crazy, but if you could have one penny of anything on Earth, like what would you make it? I think about this. I thought about it this weekend. Like, would it be sand or salt or ant? If you could have a penny for everything, hmm. what would be the most? What would be the thing that you'd be like guaranteed? It's I think actually sand, probably, but that makes you think maybe ants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would think sand. I would always say sand. I didn't even talk about salt. We went, uh, we went, uh, where were we this weekend? Uh, I can remember downtown, North, Norfolk, Virginia. And so we went to their boat. I mean, they have a big battleship. When you walk in, there's enough salt that they said if you grabbed all the salt in the world, it would be almost as tall as the Empire State Building high and cover all of North America. That's how much salt there is. Really? Yeah. Now, yeah, that's that's in there. Now, who knows if that's true? Yeah, you know, it sounds great. Though. Sounds crazy though. Sounds crazy. Uh, Just looked at how many grains of sand there are in the world. Seven quintillion. So that's what you want. That's almost a number that means nothing to me because it's yeah. so big. So that's how many pennies you'd want. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take. Yeah. I'll take. I'll the, take that. I'll take those in pennies. Yeah, I was gonna say Adam. How much money but, is that for penny? I mean, it's got to be. Could you ever? Could you even figure that out? You would say atoms. Yeah, yeah. I'd say stars if I could count that. There's yeah, more stars than grit, grains of salt. Well, I'm saying things on Earth, so they go zero. All right. That's, you mess up the first question. He goes, "Well, I said things on Earth zero. And you're golly. Yeah, you about to walk out of the room? <laughs> Everybody's nothing. walking out with money <laughs> yeah. except you. Like everybody's, even if you said pencils, the guy's a millionaire, and you, you go stars. Star. Are they on Earth? No. Oh, we did come it. And you got to leave. You're the only one. Can I borrow? So you have, you have 17 quintillion dollars, dude. You won't give me a billion. Why are you being so weird about it? <laughs> Just to get the cool one question. Waiting to ruin your whole life. You walk in that room. Didn't your think fam- it through. Your family's, you're the one. It's like, uh, it's like a hunger game. You got, you got picked out of your family to go in <laughs> and get the money for the family. And everybody's like watching on TV. Just say sand. Just say sand. Just say, Just say sand. sand. <laughs> it's here. It's on earth. There's yeah. so much of it. It doesn't matter. You know? And he's like, what if I say salt? And then they go, or salt. Yeah. Sand, salt. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Either one. Fine with either one. Cu- I'd go with cups. Yeah. I, <laughs> shoes. Who cares? Who cares? It doesn't matter. We're going to be rich. Stars. <laughs> Stars are not located on Earth. <laughs> Golly. You walk right out of there. Yeah. All right. All right. You got me. What'd you get us? What'd you get us? What'd you get us? Oh, God. Now yeah. you're down 400 bucks. You got to buy your own plane ticket there. <laughs> God. I thought I was going to fly private home. You know, I thought for sure I'd just buy an airplane home. And, I, and now I'm actually, oh, golly, doing standby. And you're just sitting there. Everybody's walking by you at the airport. Stars. Oh. You're the only one at the airport because everybody's got so much money. They all just fly their own planes now. I'm on the Today Show the next yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. What happened? What happened? I didn't think it through. I didn't think it through. <laughs> My family said salt, sand. You know, they were fine with rocks. <laughs> I didn't know that it had to be on Earth. <laughs> all right. um, animals with smaller bodies and faster metabolism, like chipmunks and squirrels, see things in slow motion. Okay. Animals with faster metabolism? Yeah. Yeah. How they know that, I, I don't know. That's probably how they, yeah. It's how they dodge things like cars and. Oh, because like it comes up. Yeah. Well, some of them. Some like of squirrels? Them. We're including squirrels in that probably? Mm-hmm. They see things in slow motion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't do much with it, huh? They don't get killed regularly. They do something. They, I mean, they, I would say they do the most with it. When yeah. I was with that BB gun, they could yeah. dodge it. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I the Matrix. 
That felt slower than slow motion. <laughs> I think that squirrel even went, he hit his own head. I was like, golly, I think something's. Is there a still photo here? I know I've seen slow motion, but I think that's a little slow. <laughs> I mean, they, they're, they're actively in like the street and the things are trying to hit them and eat them. I just like to think if I had slow motion, I could, I'd do a little more with it. Then what a squirrel, they, then what they, a squirrel does is kind of run around and eat acorns. It's not very impressive. But they're not big. So what do you think they would do? I don't know. They can't, just, like, kill something. You getting street fights? Yeah, if I could. If I could see things they in get, slow motion. They I'd... steal bird seed. Yeah. Eat. Yeah, they okay. get on that. They get into some shenanigans, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I think their life is shenanigans. It's kind of all they have. That's kind of all they got. They're, it's a fun... It's not a bad... They life. can jump out of a plane and live. Yeah. They could. Yeah. Being a squirrel is not a bad animal. It's not a bad life. life I would think. It's hectic. Busy a lot. They do always look in a hurry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Always running behind. <laughs> always late for something. Yeah. Always got to kind of keep your out, eye out. I mean, you're always just kind of... It's always a hawk around. Very paranoia. I, yeah, it actually wouldn't be a good life. You're very paranoid, <laughs> you know? Do you hear that? A lot of that, you know? Maybe just a squirrel. What's that? He goes, nothing, man. We're just talking. Goes, the other day I was going to the store. He goes, I got to get out of here. something over there? Yeah. Yeah. You see it? You see it? Nothing's over there. It's a lot of that. Uh-huh. They're very fidgety. Yeah. They do have that energy, yeah. Yeah, just a lot of, you know, they would touch the microphone a lot just being here. <laughs> How long is this? <laughs> I don't like to be in one place too long. Yeah, looking yeah. behind them. Can we shed those shades? <laughs> the uh, shortest living animal in the world is the mayfly. It lives for 24 hours. Mm, it's a good run. You got to do a lot in Imagine that time. Imagine if you came out and squashed in the first 30 minutes. You're like, I don't even got that much time, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's amazing they can stay around. I mean, they do a lot in that time period. What do they do? Well, they got to reproduce. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> get out, get after it. Golly, All right, I mean, that's that means, fair. It was yeah. 48 before I got married. <laughs> yeah, that means the first six minutes of your life, you're getting told about the birds and the bees. You got to get told, you know. <laughs> it's uh, You're born at 6 a.m. by 6.05. You got a job. You're doing an interview. <laughs> And then you got to get your stuff and <laughs> got a tie you know, on. Got a tie on. Just I'm going to work. <laughs> uh, fine. Uh, Swifts can spend most of their life in the air flying. Not the family you go on vacation yeah, with. Not the Swifts. The birds. Uh, oh. They can fly a year uh, without landing. Wow, it's a long time. Now, how they eat and sleep? I don't. I think they. I think they get really high and then they just start going down when they sleep. For like, you know, what's their alarm clock? How do you know to wake up? <laughs> so let me get this straight. They get really high up. They fall asleep. They start just start. It's a, down. It's just a free fall. Yeah. And then they wake up before they hit the ground. I think so. Go back up and do it yeah. again. Just take so. little naps like that. Yeah. I think so. Yep. So they must have some kind of built in. They can tell the alpha. It's a lot of just a It's that kick. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. 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 Got to go back up to get tall again. (laughs) Uh, There are no male or female earthworms. All earthworms have both male and female parts, but it still takes two of them to reproduce. There you go. Probably easier to date that way. Doesn't really matter. Yeah. Is she pretty or handsome? Kind of both. She's a, she's a good person. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all personality driven. Uh-huh. She's a good worm. It's kind of beautiful in a way. I know. I feel like if you're an earthworm, you'd be talking to the one side and then you'd be realize it's the butt and you're like, oh. <laughs> and you're like, and you're like, you've been seeing someone else the whole time. He goes, I got it. We've been married for 15 years again. You know, they're so down here. They get back in because. <laughs> There's no eyes or nothing, you know. So you just—it is hard to tell which is the guy had two families. Once they, they finally find him out, they go, "What's going on here?" You get nothing, and they go, "I know, but I just looked over. Who are you talking to down in that end?" Oh, what? I thought it was you. I thought it was you. <laughs> uh, koala fingerprints are so close to humans that they've tainted crime scenes. <laughs> That would be bad if you're on. Yeah. On the, well, why would you not then look into the koala bear? That's what I would say. <laughs> well, I mean, Kinda I think convenient. if I was on trial for murder, I would bring up yeah. that was koala that 
was on the scene. Yeah, I would be like, you know, they go, oh, it's another koala bear fingerprint. But yet they want me to look into them a little bit. Mm -hmm. That could be on a, a, a kind of a tear. Mm -hmm. That is like, a, that's pretty crazy. How often are koalas hanging out where people are murdered? Crime scenes. Yeah. Probably yeah. more than you think. Yeah. But, yeah. Probably not a lot, but occasionally. I will say this is the one thing that animals that makes me uncomfortable. Does he just come in and he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Everybody slow down. Man. I just watched Taken 3. That's what the <laughs> Taken 3 is about. He's like a koala bear that comes in and he goes, no, 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 no. I didn't do it. <laughs> I went through all takens this weekend. Yeah. How many yeah. are there? Three. Three. Went through every one of them. I don't want to watch anything new anymore. Yeah. I'm going through the, I'm watching The Interpreter now, and I think I've already watched it. What is that? Nicole Kidman. Yeah. There's one scene I was like, oh, I've seen this movie. And then I kept going. I was like, I don't know if I've seen this movie. There's a new in? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's one scene, though, I think I've seen. I was going to say, these animals, they make me, it's uncomfortable when animals have human hands. That, yeah. I don't like looking at that. It creeps me out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Raccoons, they have the human hands. Yeah. Oh, uh, they can that. just grab stuff. They can open sliding doors. They mm -hmm. have hands, too. Yeah. And these koalas have them, too. I'm not, I'm not a fan. Yeah. Well, they're out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to kill them. I'm just saying yeah. I'm not trying to hang out with them. Yeah. The loudest animal in the world is the pistol shrimp. It claps its... Uh... <laughs> whatever together so it's claws together so hard that it causes a sonic boom <laughs> um or a sound louder than the concord sonic boom 230 decibels and it heats the when it does it it causes um the temperature of the water to heat up to 8000 degrees killing its prey why uh they uh that'd be a great name for a, a minor league team Pistol the shrimp. pistol shrimp would the pistol be, shrimp that would be great would be great yeah yeah the pistol shrimp uh let's get through this ad yeah yeah i mean this is all right all right <laughs> keep going this just happened i killed it on google last week by the way dude yeah that's what i heard i, I, I stepped up yeah you know back, i'm back to my old ways now uh this just happened like three months ago a guy got swallowed by a whale um well, he didn't get swallowed, but he was fully engulfed in his mouth. It didn't go in the stomach, but he was uh, clam diving and came up behind him. And next thing he knows, he's just in it. He's in it. And he yeah. thought at first it was a shark, but then he was like. And he saw someone else in there, the room. <laughs> he was like, it's too roomy to be a shark. <laughs> and then he said, I real, he realized, oh my God, I'm in a whale's mouth and he's trying to swallow me. And he was wearing a scuba gear and his breathing apparatus. And he was in completely dark. And then um, he sees everything about his wife and kids, and then the whale spit him out. Yeah. How long was he in there? 30 to 40 seconds. Wow. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, think if you eat something, you could not swallow it and be like, and then get it back out, spit it back out. They said that marine biologists said that the, it was probably just a mistake. Like if you were running with your mouth open and a gnat flew in your mouth. That's probably what the whale was doing. Yeah, I don't think the whale was creeping up on him for the past two months, keeping an eye on him. I I'm would not, imagine it was a mistake. I don't even think I would have even blamed the whale at all. I never thought, man, this whale ate this guy on person, on purpose. I think most people would think that he did it on purpose. I would think it's a mistake. I think most really, yeah, because they eat just big things of fish. There's no signs that they want to eat humans. A whale, there's no signs of that. Like besides a killer whale, I would be like, "Oh wow, you just got caught in the thing." I, I assume the whales do it on purpose, man. You did too. Yeah. Yeah. No. You no. don't think that they just they just saw some dude out there? Let's see what this guy tastes like. No, I I, I wouldn't at all. I trust. I you know in, a lot about whales. I believe in them more than y'all do. <laughs> well, we believe in them. I think I you know think more you about them. them. <laughs> I, how many whales have eaten people? I don't think they've eaten that many people. Nobody. Well, how many people are hanging out around whales? That's why Probably they're not, not eating people. How many mistakes have been made? I, I don't think that many. I mean, I, it's, you would hear about them yeah. unless they get swallowed. Less and than spit them out. Less yeah. than ten. I mean, so that means the scientists had to come give. Here's what that scientist comes in and, and, and goes <clears throat> after the study that we did. <laughs> 
We would love to conclude that we think the well did it just like if you were running and you ate a nap. He did not do it on purpose. And I'd be behind him like. <laughs> I said that from the beginning. <laughs> we paid this guy. Did scientists get paid for that? You think they get oh, paid? Sure. They get paid for. I don't know if it was a, like a study rate? they did. I think it was the newspaper called a marine biologist and said, you think they did that on purpose or something like that? I don't know. It might be in that article right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's take the time and read it out loud for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, the animal health company Zotus is donating more than 11,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines to area zoos. 100, no, 70 zoos all over the country for 100 different species. Oh, I don't think they should have to take it if they don't want to. <laughs> Well, some are arguing. Some are fighting it. <laughs> uh, just Johnson Johnson, one dose, please. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not doing this twice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dumbest animals in the world, the domesticated turkey. Really? Yeah. Not a wild turkey? So they're saying like a, if you bought one at a store, <laughs> took it home? Uh, I, I don't know. It just says domesticated turkey. They look up. One's in a bad relationship? They have a a condition called titanic. (laughs) That's very funny. Domestic abuse. (laughs) Just leave. Witness protection. Why don't you leave? (laughs) They have a condition called titanic collier spasms, which makes them stare up at the sky nonstop, even when it's raining. Some drown to death by looking up at the sky. (laughs) Golly. Wow. That could have been the national symbol of America right there. Oh, the, the turkey. That's what Benjamin Franklin wanted, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. That's what a lot of people wanted. Was the turkey? It was the turkey. And I, you know, I would have probably been one of those guys. I'm a coward. You were you were over the over the eagle. Yeah, the eagle doesn't impress me that much. It's powerful. A turkey's kind of majestic, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, you know. You identify more with the turkey? <laughs> After what you just read, <laughs> yeah, I think walking so. Walking around, just kind of looking around. <laughs> looking up at the rain. Yeah. Drowned to death. Uh, Hawaii has no native snakes, and it's illegal to own one on the island. That's what you think. You think there's no snakes? There has to be some a snake. They try to keep it from that. They say they have yeah. no uh, post serious threat to Hawaii's environment because they have no natural predators, so they keep it off the island. Yeah. In Guam, which is one of U.S. territories, they had no snakes until World War II, when a cargo ship accidentally brought brown tree snakes to the island. And they've since taken over. Now there's two million of them. And they've wiped out ten of the twelve native birds. God, to Guam. Like, <laughs> snakes just dominate when they, they show dominate up. When they show up, it Shoot. went from a car, a ship full of them to yeah. two million. Yeah, they get after it. In New Zealand, they don't even allow snakes in zoos. They just can't take a chance at getting out. And they have twenty professional snake handlers around the country whose job is to find and catch any snakes spotted trying to enter the country. <laughs> They see them at the border? Yeah. And they go in. Build the wall. You got glasses on? <laughs> I'll talk to you in the back with a hat on. i like, can you jog for me real fast? <laughs> you can't jog. No, but jog. He's not going up and down. Yeah. That's their whole job. To look at the, see if there's snakes. To look for snakes. Yeah, if you don't want them. You've seen it in Florida, right? Where they just these pythons yeah. came in and just devastated the Everglades. Yeah, I think we talked about that in the last yeah. one. Right? Yeah, pretty wild. Yeah, so you can't do that. I mean, so they just don't want them in there, so they just don't let them. You know, mm-hmm. it's gotta be a freedom to know there's no snakes. You don't have that fear of yeah walking on a snake. What happened to your snake? We let it go in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Did you let it go? We let him in the ocean towards New Zealand to see if he made it. We told him New Zealand. So I guess we didn't think anybody was looking out for him. Apparently he got caught. Uh, Give him a hat and glasses. Yeah. I gave him some money and some mat. Uh, We gave it to someone that had snakes. It was starting to get big. Yeah. It was like, it's one of those where you start making a mistake where you're like, you're about to start feeding it rabbits and stuff. Like, it's, you're just going down that road. Rabbits? Is that big? It was like feeding it mice and then buying bigger, like kind of like mice. big mice and then yeah. a rat 
and then I mean, you could maybe get to where it could be rabbits, and mm-hmm. so then we just gave it to someone. That's that, where you're like, we bit yeah. off a little more than we could chew. Yeah. Yep, yep. And your family dog ate yours, right? Yeah, dog ate our snake. Oh, y'all had a snake too? Yeah. What'd y'all have? We had a ball python. Yeah. My my pet hamster skunky. Mm-hmm. My mom fed it to the snake one day and then it got out and the dog ate the snake. Why did your mom the hamster yeah. to this? I think she knew it was dying. Yeah. And she just didn't want to go to the pet store to get more yeah. mice for us. So she was like, let's just put this thing out of its misery. Like a garage sale. She knew the hamster like was dying? What, yeah. I think it was old. And, and it ate mice? What? I no, you said- no, G- no. The, you knew that. You said the hamster was dying. And mm-hmm. then she fed. So she said, I don't want to go buy mice for the snake. Oh, so okay. I'll just, I'll just throw that old yeah. hamster in. Yeah. Tell Aaron the hamster died of natural yeah. causes. Yeah. And then years later, she was like, You remember Skunky? Yeah. yeah. He uh, Slither ate him. Yeah. That was, that was y'all snake's name, Slither and Skunky. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are like too smart to the think dog, of it. And you made fun of Bailey? <laughs> the dog's name was Rocket. Rocket? Like <laughs> Rocket Mortgage? Because it was fast. Yeah, like the mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> That's because it was fast like a dog. I would almost think yeah. your dog's not. I like to see how fast his dog is to be like, yeah, it's normal dog speed. <laughs> like it's I don't think it was exceptionally fast yeah. or anything, but it would run around. We called it Rocket. Yeah. They let the kids pick. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, y'all, you know. I bet your dog was smarter than most dogs. Yeah, it was all right. Sitting around the family. I don't know. Not the name well, like was Skunky. It was an ounce. Slither. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Rocket. And that's what's going on in that house. They all just eating each other. Yeah, Rocket was an outdoor dog, man. Y'all never met a person that was named that. Rocket's not a bad. Slither's. None of them are great, man. None of them are great. Slither's not great. Mm-hmm. They're better than Bailey, I think. I don't know. I have a friend who named their cat Rocket. Because that's a character in Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. The raccoons, Rocket. Yeah. Oh, I don't think we were thinking of that. No. Well, it wasn't out yet. Okay. It's probably not. We're yeah. just thinking of fast. Yeah. <laughs> How fast he can go. He's faster than us. Uh, animals have affected professional sporting events. The most famous is Randy Johnson, whose yeah. pitch totally destroyed that bird. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Uh, if you Google Randy Johnson baseball, it gets less Google searches than Randy Johnson bird. Dave Winfield got arrested for uh, hitting a seagull with a ball. Do you remember like, this? No. He was warming up in between innings, and he threw the ball back into the dugout, and it hit a seagull and killed it. And was he trying to? There's debate about it. He says no, but some animal rights people said he was. So when he got done after the game – there were plainclothes police officers waiting for him. They charged him with cruelty to animals, punishable up to $500 fine and six months in jail. Took him to the police station, read him his rights. Posted, he posted a $500 bond. He was supposed to come back, but they later dropped the charges. But it was a big deal. This was yeah. in Toronto. He went on later to play for him. Yeah. Oh, that's awkward. <laughs> okay. So, okay. He killed a seagull with a... And he wasn't trying to. We, well, I, don't, I, don't I don't understand. I think they think he was. Like he was like, watch this. Like, How far away? Oh, yeah. There's no video of it. This okay. is in between innings. Okay. Yeah. So he's, he's out in the outfield. He played outfield. Yep. And he's just throwing, like they're warming up. Before, it's a lot of he innings. say, she say. <laughs> what is it? What? She sells, he she sells. She sells, oh. she sells down <laughs> by the. She sells down by the. He sells, she sells down by the seashore. So yeah. it's a lot of that. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of that going on. He said that <laughs> he couldn't have done it if he tried. You can't kill a seagull trying to. Yeah, I think he did. I find that hard to believe, too, that he wouldn't. He's warming up between innings. He has the ball. He's like, the innings about to start. He throws it. He to was the a dugout. pitcher? No, he's an outfield. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's still throwing a ball around between Yeah, innings. no, but it's just season seems. Uh, yeah. Where was this bird? In the dugout. Right? No, I think it was out on the outfield. Okay. I think this was the old Toronto Blue Jays stadium. I think they had a lot of seagulls that just kind of hung out there, and he threw it in and nailed it. Why are they called the Blue Jays then? You know? Yeah. There's not one Blue Jay out there. <laughs> the blue seagulls. Should be, or just the seagulls. Yeah. Um, and then Steve Lowry, at the 1998 Players Championship, was about to putt for eagle, and a seagull landed and grabbed his ball and took yeah. it off and dropped it in the water. Mm. So. 
to uh, replace it. You see that cat the Yankees game recently? Mm-hmm. That ran out there. It was like a twenty minute delay. Mm-hmm. It was pretty crazy. One man. was on a wire or something. Is that not that one? There's a different one at the Miami game oh, yeah. where that yeah. cat was hanging off the yeah. second story. Kind of traumatizing to watch that thing trying to hold on for dear life, man. Traumatized by it? A little bit. You're like, this is yeah. jarring, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not traumatized, but yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You made it to work that day. <laughs> You got made it here. You made it here. <laughs> yeah, I did. I can't make it today. <laughs> I watched a video that went viral. <laughs> Only reason it could go viral is because this, this thing triggered. had to live. <laughs> if it would have died, they never would have went. You know. Yeah. Do I have things Think about your own mortality. A little bit, man. Yeah. Mm. Thought about my own cat's mortality yeah. too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a species of jellyfish that is immortal. It, re- <laughs> it reverts back to its child state um, after it reaches a certain level, so therefore never dies. It's called an immortal jellyfish. <laughs> I think I've impressed Nate, finally. Where is this? In the ocean. Yeah. yeah. Where it would be. <laughs> Where'd you think it was? There, so you too. can't kill it at all? You can kill it, yeah, but it's not going to die of old age. So is it like real? Is it just like uh, just keeps going back and forth? I mean, it doesn't make sense. I mean, I think the only way they die is if something eats it or it gets killed. Like it's yeah, it's not invincible, but it somehow reproduces itself and uh, just never dies. So it would it shrink and get small again? I think so. I think it somehow so it gets old, small again, and then goes. Yeah. What if they're like, you know what? Turns out, just lives five hundred years, and we just never paid attention that long. Yeah, this was, how would this, they know? This? I was going to say, how long do you observe yeah. one before you go? Yeah. I think this thing never yeah. dies. Yeah, yeah. What scientist goes? They go. I don't know how long you think it lives. He goes, I'm immortal. <laughs> I'm gonna just throw that out there. I'm gonna say, I think it's immortal. And then that guy gets to keep that job, and he does it. And they go, you know what? I think you're right. They go, my grandfather watched this. My dad watched this, mm-hmm. and now I'm watching it. Yeah, we're all watching the same things in a cup. So it must be You're just in a cup. They just sit out. Must be immortal. I mean that that's really unfortunate. That much more if you're in an accident. Why? Because you. Well, I mean, you're going to live forever, and then you bump yeah. into a boat yeah. and die, or, yeah. or or you're paralyzed. And you saying that thing, this life means more than me. Yeah, I don't know. He's trying to make a joke. Imagine you make that joke. You have to live that, live that joke over and over again. <laughs> no, every time you come back, I look. And you go. You say the same thing. What happens if you get hurt real bad? <laughs> no, I can't. No. Mm. They try to lead you over here. Someone eats you. Trying to get rid of you. <laughs> and you pop back. You go, go. <laughs> the uh, male seahorse goes through pregnancy and gives birth to the babies. Yeah. Only animals on Earth where the male carries the babies. Okay. And I mean, if that doesn't, I'm I'm running out here. I've no, I've heard of that. Okay. Yeah. This is not the mortal one. I've never heard of. What animal? If you could own any pet, any animal, what would it be? A dog. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like what? Uh, like you're pretty happy with how things are now. <laughs> yeah, I man. Yeah. Dog shows you love. Like a dog, you know. It's like how much like a dog. You wouldn't want a tiger or a no chimpanzee. Yeah, or... You want a bit of hug something. You like? Could it be your friend? You know, it won't kill you. Sure. Well, otherwise, why would you want a tiger? I don't know. A lot what of would people. You want? Uh, probably a chimpanzee. Yeah. Something like that. Something that's you rip your head off. <laughs> It would be fun if you just had a monkey on your shoulder at all times. Right? <laughs> yeah. That would be that would be pretty good. Just carrying one around, my little puppy. That's what she rides on my shoulders. Yeah, she, oh, yeah. Walks around the house. Yeah, that's just kind of her thing. She just and comes. Up. Little does she know you prefer a monkey. <laughs> yeah, it's not even your favorite favorite pet. Um, have you guys heard about Operation Cat Drop? <laughs> no. I hope I hope y'all I like think it. so. In the 1950s, oh. yeah. there was an outbreak of malaria in on the island of Borneo. To eradicate the mosquitoes that were causing malaria, the World Health Organization 
spread DDT to kill the mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. But it had uh, unnecessary effects. It killed the mosquitoes, but it also spread to the flies, which were eaten by geckos, and the geckos were eaten by cats, and all the cats on Borneo died. And with no cats on the island, rats flourished, and the people were now threatened by the plague and typhus. So to cope with this problem, the, the World Health Organization had to parachute 14,000 live cats into Borneo to fix the rat population, called Operation Cat Drop. Did they? Yeah. They ate all the Borneo rats. Borneo again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Where's Borneo never, at? The place it's never a, really took it's off. It's an island in Asia, a giant island in Asia. You think they would just like let it be like, just let it be its own thing then? Just don't go to Borneo. Well, there's people that are living there. Oh, we'll get them off there. <laughs> How big is it? Oh, it's, oh, it's a pretty big island. Oh, we need it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. This is a smaller but, one. We could have probably just been like, ah, how do we get there? Yeah, it's drop- often used as an example of how sometimes when we don't think about the repercussions of an action, how yeah. it leads to unnecessary consequences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you end up dropping cats in off of parachute parachute them. Them in. Yeah, They didn't sign up for that. Do they all have individual parachutes, or were they like? <laughs> I think they That's... were drafted <laughs> until the Garfield, which is the Muhammad Ali of cats, refused to go, <laughs> and then, and then he. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when it stopped. They said, I'm not fighting your wars. <laughs> <laughs> he was a conscious objector. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, do you know the story? I know you know it. Boo Weekly fighting the orangutan? Yeah, it's my favorite story. No, it wasn't. You can just read it. All right. So when he was six, Boo Weekly is a professional golfer. Okay. When he was 16, he and his buddies went to a county fair. A guy got out. He's said, big. He's like 6'6". Six, six. Okay. Oh, really? Boo Weekly's a big dude. All right. He got out, the guy got out at the fair, set up a cage in the bed of his truck, put up a little table, and went out to the cab of the truck with a orangutan and started yelling, five dollars, five to win 50. Who can beat this orangutan? So everybody's pictured. I've told this story in a bunch of stuff. They're what, this guy would set up at a fair, right? You just said, like, mm-hmm. in, you know, nowhere, Georgia, where, you know, mm-hmm. middle of nowhere, mm-hmm. in the south. You know, Boo's probably about my age. I don't know Boo, but like, uh, but he, he's probably, I think he's around my age, maybe, maybe a little bit older. I don't know. But, uh, and so they would set up and you f- bet five to win 50. Right. So if you bet $5 and if you can, what do you have to do? You have to fight a ring attack. You have to fight it. You have to knock it out or you have to win the fight. I think just, I think you just have to spend, you just have to last with the, with it in the ring. Yeah. Like one round. Um, and you win 50 bucks. Yeah. And it's got, does that boxing gloves on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then he, they drew straws. He drew the short straw among his buddies. Everybody pitched in a dollar. There was five of them. So he gets up there, puts on gloves and headgear, and he had to sign a waiver, which he said, looking back, that was a bad sign. Make sure you listen to this. This yeah, is yeah. good. <laughs> the, he said, the orangutan did not look like much. He came up to about my chest, threw his arm, though his arms were as long as he was tall. When the match started, he didn't lift his arms. He kept them down at his side and used them to pivot and follow me as I circled him like Muhammad Ali. I just didn't know how I could miss. My strategy was to fake with my right hand, and the orangutan tried to block the punch. I'd throw my left. My buddies were yelling, get him, boo, kick his butt. <laughs> I moved in close and faked with my right, and that's the last thing I remember. I woke up bleeding in the back of a friend's <laughs> pickup truck. <laughs> the orangutan had knocked me cold with one punch. <laughs> Which I didn't even see coming. Yeah. <laughs> My friends thought it was hilarious. They said I had a glass jaw and called me glassy. After I came to, we watched the orangutan knock out guy after guy. Not one guy could lay a glove on him. He had reflexes like a cat and later learned that, that orangutan could tear a guy's arm off. Yeah. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> That's the old dude. I mean, I've heard that story. I've told it. It's one of the best stories I've ever heard. I mean, just so, it just he goes, I'll fix my right, go to my left. It doesn't even easily that welcome back of everybody's truck. <laughs> the orangutan, you got to just really, if anybody's at home, you listen to the story, you got to really picture an orangutan, arms, the gloves are probably touching the ground. Uh-huh. And he just stands and, and goes in a circle and just kind of follows you. And it's shorter. It's much smaller than yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. And then right before it, you don't ever see it even <laughs> swing. It just goes, poof. <laughs> and it's so strong that it knocks you out. I mean... <laughs> And he's, I mean, he's, it's not like you see him get into it. There's no, uh-huh. like, I got my legs into it. It's just, just out there. Wow. And then they carry you up and lay you in the back of the truck. And this was, you know. He, 
I think he said he didn't tell that story for a long time because he didn't want animal rights people yeah, upset about. Sure, but you know, it was when he was a kid, and it was when he was a kid, and like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I, I bet it's gonna be pretty tough to find that now. Uh-huh. If you want yeah. to go watch an orangutan fight a guy, I don't think you can just go find it. It's not as easy. There's not public orangutan yeah. boxing matches. Yeah. yeah. But not I mean, like it's the good just old days. Yeah. So funny to think of just, they have no idea what's happening and just boom, it just comes up out of nowhere. Wake up in a truck. I love that the safety health procedure is they just, he gets knocked out, they just put him in their friend's truck. There's there's nothing else there. <laughs> there's no ambulance nearby. <laughs> I mean, he's a, became a professional golfer. I mean, yeah. If you told him at that, like, hey, you're going to be a professional golfer and actually have a, you know, you're going to be a, a big time golfer, famous golfer. And, you know, in his life, and you look at his life's resume, and part of it is he was knocked out by a ring at the end. <laughs> like, just seeing. It's just such a, like, you look at his life's resume. What did you do? Professional golfer? What? <laughs> knocked out by a ring at 15? Oh. Probably should have ended there. Yeah. But, Made yeah. it past that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that it? That's about it. Yeah. Hummingbirds, the only bird that can fly backwards. <laughs> okay. That's, cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Ask them about it. They'll tell you. <laughs> uh, all right. That's it. This is a short, this is a little bit shorter one. A little shorter. Some of these I thought maybe would take off more than it did. So that's my mistake. Yeah. No, I'm not thinking I brought some thunder to it this week. You did. But, you did. You know, it's pretty tough when you got, you know, who's. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Honestly, it's hard to just get when I keep having a different seats. It's like I never get settled in. Yeah, it's like I'm just not back in. in the groove. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Know? It's tough. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a little bit quicker, but that's all right. I I, I rolled up this morning in the bus. Last week was uh, two and a half, so uh, we gave them extra last week. And that was good. Mm-hmm. So we're we're even and out. Yeah. Even Stevens. Yeah. Uh, all right, <laughs> I am uh, going back to uh, Washington D.C. tomorrow. If you're watching this, and I'll be in Richmond, Baltimore, and Red Bank, New Jersey, uh, and then Rain Check, the Rain Check Tour. We're coming everywhere. The shows have been fun. It's been awesome. We've had a really great time so far. Uh, so come out to those. They've been great. Some yell, let's go, folks, like the rest, like everybody. It's a fun time. Yeah. You have any stuff? I'm, I'm here this weekend. Wide open. I'm in Wide Wichita open. this weekend, Ooh. the Looney Bin. Whoa. If you're in Wichita, come out. Wichita. All right. Thank you guys very much. Talk to you next week. Bye.